Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television! Yay! For the community, by the Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. And tonight, we're going to celebrate the holiday season by learning how to and building gingerbread houses. My guest tonight is Christine Brooks, and she has built her business, Sweet Domestics, around her talent for creating beautiful gingerbread houses. Thanks for joining me, Christine. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad to be here. Good. Well, I'm very excited about this, and I'm curious where you got your talent for making gingerbread houses. Well, it started um, when my children, who are now 23 and 25, were three and five years old. Okay. And I felt that they needed to make gingerbread houses in order to have a happy childhood. And <laughs> I, uh, I was one of those moms that uh, felt it was my job as their mother that they have a happy childhood, and I couldn't find a decent kit okay. to make gingerbread houses. So I went to Fowl's Hardware and asked Russell uh, to help me find the necessary uh, materials so that I could make my own gingerbread houses. So I did. Well, and you really started from scratch. I really did. I had a tin... Cutters and all. Yeah, they were... It was tin flashing. I cut it with a utility knife into strips, oh found the glue, bent them into the shapes, and uh, we had parties for 20 years. And um, as my kids got older and their friends who had been coming for um, you know, for, since they were seven, they were starting to move away and get married, and I realized they were going to have children of their own soon. And I wanted to pass the tradition on and let them do this with their families. It's a great way to bring people together. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughters still make gingerbread houses. They started, as I said, at three and five. Uh, they made them right up through high school and college. And, and uh, so my goal is just to share this with the rest of the world. It. So, And yeah. it's truly become a holiday tradition for your family. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's great. That's yeah. great. Well, we have all of the steps here, mm -hmm. and we're going to try and get through the whole process. All right. So shall we start? Yes, we What's should. What's the first thing? Okay, first thing is making the cookie dough. Now I okay. have um, a couple of options. Uh, right. In the uh, instruction booklet, there are recipes uh, for the cookie this dough. This is the booklet that comes in the kit? Yes. Okay. And um, it has the recipes from scratch, so you can just include all the ingredients yourself from scratch. Okay. Uh, to make it a little bit easier, what I did uh, last year is I came up with the spice mix, the Spicebrook Forest Gingerbread Spice Mix. This has all my spices basically in the proper proportions. The um, uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and ginger in the right proportions. And it comes with a little scoop. So you can measure all your spices very easily okay. with the scoop. And one of these jars has uh, enough for about 10 servings. Uh, okay. One recipe, which includes all these ingredients, there's three cups of flour, uh, some baking powder, the spice, brown sugar, egg, molasses, two tablespoons of shortening, uh, all of these ingredients uh, will make uh, a dough that will make seven gingerbread houses. Wow. Yes. and uh, That's great. So it's not build one, do another recipe, build another one. That's mm -hmm. great. Make seven. And okay. you can do them in batches. And to make it even easier, this year what I did was I included um, a cookie dough mix. And uh, with the mix, uh, basically it has the flour, the spices, the baking soda, and the sugar already included. Mm -hmm. So all you would add would be the egg, the molasses, and the uh, shortening in your bowl. And uh, it takes, you know, two, three minutes to mix it up in a mixing bowl, and you're ready to roll. So if you're from scratch, if you're a from scratch cook, all of these ingredients. Right. If you're not necessarily a totally from scratch person, you can use the dough with the wet ingredients. You just That's need to right. have the wet ingredients. Yep, egg, molasses. And it's nice if you're drink. not a super cook, you know, if you don't cook a lot, mm -hmm. you don't have to go out and buy the spice you know, mix. six spices or whatever. Yeah. You can just 
use yeah. the mix. That's the, the nice thing with the spice mix too is and this um, has the mix in it. The spice this has in the it. spices. Okay, so you don't even it. need that if you have this. It's all set. Right. right. The it's advantage really of the spice mix is it's great in muffins and pies, oatmeal cookies, ginger molasses okay. cookies. I throw it in everything. I love so this anything stuff. Anything that you like that flavor. Oh yeah, yeah. In. Pumpkin okay. pie, sweet potato pie. It goes in everything. Right. So okay. anyway. So we're all going right. to do our steps on of. Uh, cooking so we've just mixed all that for you at home and I should mention too you have a website that has all of these steps and, and things in it yes so if you're at home watching shows. and um, you're thinking we're going way too fast don't worry you can go to the website which we'll mention at the end uh, the sweetdomestics.com and you can get these um, tips online wonderful okay so we're going to pretend that we mixed this all up uh-huh I'll put this to the side Okay. And then what do we do? Now we have our dough. Now, okay, now uh, one of the other uh, products in my product line is a pastry cloth and rolling pin cover set. Okay, so you um, roll out on a pastry cloth. So, yeah. Um, this is, some people have tried rolling it out on just like a plain uh, uh, counter or mm -hmm. cu cutting board, but uh, the dough makes a very soft, pliable dough that is very easy to roll out. And um, because it's so soft and pliable, it will stick to um, any kind of other surface. Okay. With the pastry cloth and rolling pin cover set, you get perfect dough every time. It rolls okay. out thinly, evenly. And it it's doesn't just stick to your counter. It doesn't stick to your counter. It doesn't stick to your your uh, to anything. And it this rolls is a step that intimidates me. <laughs> Rolling out dough of any sort. So I'm interested in your magic okay. of how you do that without All right. getting it thin enough. I, I never seem to get it thin enough or if I get it too thin and it sticks and so. All right. We're just going to use a little bit of the dough. Uh, one little piece like that will we'll spread out. You'll see it's very soft and pliable. Very soft dough. Yep. And this is and a whole batch? This is a whole this batch. The batch that that's the whole batch. Okay. So that's and, uh, and that's for seven gingerbread houses. So uh, pretty much all you do, you see if you roll it out you just kind of um, just try to keep it even okay. so if you see that there's one part that's getting kind of uh, thick you just roll it out and I have to say this type of rolling pin is really the best because it has um, these little bearings to roll uh, okay. the handles hold uh, steady and straight uh, sometimes if they're fixed handles it's harder to roll it out right. evenly so I highly recommend these but why don't you try Sarah and see how, how see easy it is yeah yeah, try it out. It's right. it's I really the concept of rolling, but I you know when I'm making sure my mother-in-law makes fabulous sugar cookies and they're always so nice and thin and crispy. Mm. And mm -hmm. um, I never get them that thin or crispy. And I know your gingerbread people seem pretty thin. So yeah. are we getting close? That looks pretty good. Pretty yeah. Good, so. You know the thing is is that um, let me just get a little bit more okay. on this edge. The thing with the dough is it's very forgiving. Um, it's really, okay. you know, hard to go wrong uh, with it. So there's basically our cookie dough. Get a few so that's little. That's what about? An uh, it's about um, kind of a, uh, between an eighth and a sixteenth is usually what okay. I say uh, in and size. And it's pretty. It is pretty easy to lift off of the. Oh yeah, off. yeah. So yeah. it's not tearing or anything. Now um, the other thing uh, I would say is that um, what we want to do when we cut out the cookies mm -hmm. here. The cookie cutters over here. Uh, maybe what we can do is um, show how so they are. These are the cookie cutters that you designed. Yes, they are. And I am having them manufactured in the United States. They're oh, made good. of tin Yay. plate steel. We love that. Made <laughs> That's in the, right. Made in the That's USA. right. And they're made to last. Uh, these cookie cutters will probably last at least one lifetime, probably two. Oh, wow. Though I don't think I'll be here to take complaints. You never know. <laughs> But um, pass the business along. But that's right. My goal is I want people to be able to to make them, uh, you know, throughout their their children as their children grow up and into grand, you know, grandchildren. So uh, I really want to make products. As a customer, I like products that last. Right. And so, so uh, when I created this set, uh, I found a really great uh, cookie cutter company in the United States. So these are basically the ones for the house. We have a front and back wall. Okay. Um, you can cut it out with the, you know 
with the door okay. um, or with the wind that's the front or with the window for the back. Uh, this is the, the roof piece and you can have uh, roof pieces plain or you can use them with a skylight so you can peek oh, inside oh, the house. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can decorate in here. yeah, right. you can decorate the inside. These are the side walls and uh, and we also have a window. You can either put it square. I always like to put them on the diagonal. I don't know why, but I do. And okay. uh, so this is basically it. The trick with these is uh, when you cut them out, you want to try to cut them out so you have as little um, space between them as possible. So there's as little so you don't scrap. Waste the dough. Okay. Yeah, because you're going to have to re roll it. And okay. um, the, the less you re-roll, you see in the back, uh, it's going to have flowers, so it's going to mm -hmm. dry out the dough every time you roll it out okay. and re-roll it and, and roll the scraps in. So you so want to try to... as few scraps as possible. Right. Try okay. to cut them out close together. And here you see we have uh, the front and the, and the front door over here. And then this is the back wall. And uh, we're going to cut out a little window on the diagonal. And then, uh, let's see, this one got a little bent over here. The key thing when you make the cookies is that uh, you're going to put them on a very lightly greased cookie sheet. Okay, um, so this cookie sheet is greased? Lightly greased, okay. yep. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer them uh, with a spatula. Uh, if you try to move them by hand, they sometimes get a little, you know, misshaped. So they stretch or they break, stretch. maybe. Yeah, even. exactly. Okay. So you want to do them like that. And, uh, and then uh, these I just... I'll hold this up while you're doing a few more, just so okay. they won't slide off. <laughs> from the top so maybe we can see how you cut the door out and you cut the window out right and then uh, over here we're going to get a couple of side walls going and um, now these the nice thing about these cookies is that um, you know, as I said, one recipe makes seven gingerbread houses, mm -hmm. and um, they cook very quickly. So they just bake for about uh, four minutes. You can, four minutes. Yeah, you can really? check them. Uh, I would check them about three and a half minutes. The smaller wow. cookies will bake faster. I think we're running out of room down. here. Yeah. Oh, we're running out of room there. Okay. Right. Okay. And the other thing is, like, um, you see how they're bending uh, just because you held them up. Right. But, you want um, to keep them flat. Keep them flat mm -hmm. so that, uh, you know, sometimes I find when I put them in a tray, um, you know, they curl up and then they don't, they don't fit quite right. So this is the roof. And now the roof uh, piece over here. So the here. roof is the biggest piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll show you how to put them all together. So there's the roof plane. And then uh, we have the roof with the skylight. So the roof with the skylight would be like the end of the house or the side with the window cut out. Right. 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 But you're using the rectangular piece. Right. Okay. Well, actually, um, the roof with the skylight is, it, th this is the larger, this is the sidewall piece right here, right. the smaller. And so uh, it's the roof, but we're using it, the same roof as that, yeah. but with the skylight. But yeah. you're putting the hole in the, the hole in, cutter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that idea because then you can see, and that's very right, cute. Right, right. You can do lots of little people and things yeah. in there. So there I'll are stop. all these little... Oh yeah, now little guys, um, see, you can create. When I first had my first gingerbread house, tiny, tiny. Oh, thank you. This is my grand dog Oliver, the little dog. Oh, cute. He's a little stray dog my daughter found, and this was my cat Bubbles. Oh, cute. And um, and I added a little elf because I think every house should have a little magic. Yeah. And there's a little bear cookie oh, cutter. Cute. And we have a tree, and a little boy and a little girl. And Excellent. so we have, you know, we have a family in the house, and uh, every every uh, house has to have pets. Uh, when I first had my first gingerbread house party, mm -hmm. one of my friends brought animal crackers because he wanted his house to have pets. This was oh, before I, I had the little ones. The so when I when I went commercial, I decided I had to make sure That's I had people. pets. And, well, and it's and fun to have them displayed on the outside. Yeah. And, and the other thing I was going to say, this elf cookie cutter, the interesting thing yeah. about the elf is it can be used in a variety of ways. You 
You can use it as a witch for Halloween. Oh. You can also use it as a leprechaun for uh, oh, St. Patrick's cute. Day. Uh, some people have said it looks like a bunny if you put it sideways. It does, or like actually. A, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, somebody else said they thought it was like tail. a crocodile. Yeah. This could be the jaws, and that could be so the you crocodile tail. It doesn't just have to be. Right, Christmas. right, okay. right, right. So, so we're going to bake our cookies. Yep, bake the cookies. And then, okay. um, and the scraps, we just gather them up and re-roll re -roll them, them into the rest of the dough. Okay. And uh, you don't have to refrigerate the dough at all. A lot of doughs require you to refrigerate them, but it makes it very hard and unmanageable. So it's best to use the dough fresh right when you make it. And, uh, so no refrigerating. Which no refrigerating, which is unusual for, is for doughs. Than, yeah, most doughs. Right. Okay, so Wonderful. I'm going to this down. Okay. And then now, now, while it's cooking, we're going to do frosting. Real quick? Sure. And then we have to okay. make sure we have time to assemble. All right. So we get rid of our pastry cloth. And then here's the cookie dough, too. Okay, put the cookie dough. Right. Um, now, the, um, the royal icing mix, uh, this is another product that I introduced this year. Okay. Uh, basically, the recipe for the cookie dough is also in the instruction booklet. Okay. Or, and the, the royal icing the is icing. in the instruction okay. booklet. And uh, it's basically powdered sugar, powdered egg white, cream of tartar. Okay and water. Okay. So this basically just has three ingredients, powdered sugar, cream of tartar, powdered egg white. And all you do is add six tablespoons of water, okay. and you beat it in your mixer with the wire whisk, like this. So, um, you know, it's going to uh, kind of have this kind of thick consistency. You can see that it's, see it's nice it. and thick. You just beat it till it's nice and thick. If it's too thin, you can just keep beating it. It'll thicken up. Or, so it's um, pretty firm. It's, it's more than just peaks. It's yeah. pretty solid. Right, right. It's and if it's beyond peaks. Yeah. You don't want it to be too thick because then it will burst your bags. But um, but now what you do, this will also make enough, this uh, this royal icing mix makes enough for seven okay. houses, to decorate seven houses. And okay. uh, what we do here is uh, we're going to put them in um, a little uh, sandwich bag. You take a sandwich bag like this, okay. and um, you take a scoop of the icing and put it in. And I feel like I don't know what I did with my sandwich bags, but oh, you let's know what? See. I think I uh, I have one here. I can use well, this we can, one here. you can just show the ones in the um, that are already filled. Well, um, the trick here is I just wanted to show people how okay. to do this because it's there's tricky. a little trick. Uh oh. Yeah, there's I'll a little trick. trick. Uh, you turn the bag inside out. Ah, this is a good trick. I can see it already. <laughs> yes. And, you know, this is your piping tool. You don't need anything fancy or expensive. Okay. And you just take, you can use an ice cream scoop. Uh, I forgot to bring my ice cream scoop today. So you just okay. use a little dollop of, of icing, and you put it right in the bag, and you just kind of, with your fingers, ah. scrape it off the side. So much easier than trying to lump it in there. Right. Excellent. And now what you do is you just squeeze all the icing, press it all, push it all down into one corner of the bag. Okay. And then you twist the bag and gather it around. And then what you do is you take a little twist tie, uh, you know, that you get. Right. And you just put it around there to secure it to keep the icing in the bag. And then what you do is you take a, a, a very sharp pair of scissors. Okay. And you make a little tiny hole right in the tip. Okay. And that's what you use to to frost your uh, to glue your Excellent. house together. So you don't need candy. special decorating bags or anything. No, that's great. You just throw them no. out when you're done. You don't have to feel bad. Absolutely, it's very Excellent. nice, easy, easy. Now the other thing I just wanted to mention about these is that um, what I like to do is I like to uh, make colored icing. Mm -hmm. So I usually when I decorate houses like to have a little green a little red, uh, a little yellow, depending on the season. Sometimes right. I have, you can make these houses any Halloween time of year. Or yeah, Halloween, you have different the ones. Beach might be blue. So, yeah, or Hanukkah, you could do Hanukkah, um, yeah. a blue blue and white uh, and yellow. Um, so these are, you know, okay. what they look like. Um, and, and what you can do is, uh, when you, before you put the twist tie in, uh -huh. um, you can put the food coloring in here. Now, here's another trick. 
Quick trick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you want to use these uh, cake decorating um, food dyes. The ones that you get in the grocery store and uh, those little those. little thin, uh, they're like liquid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like they, the little pointy. Yeah. Like, yeah they fade things. in a couple of days. The oh, colors okay. fade almost instantly. So you want to use either these, you know, these right. pastes or um, or these. These are really nice because they, you don't have to like get a spoon dirty okay. or anything like that. So I kind of like to use those. But you just put um, maybe about a half a teaspoon okay. or two teaspoons, and then what you do is you just kind of you mm -hmm. just smush the bag up. You so know, you just knead it in there, you right in the in. bag. You don't even have yeah. spoons. That's great. And I always like to have black because black is great for eyes. Oh. So it's a little okay. a little uh, a trick color you may not think about. Exactly, but it's really uh, a great color to have. You can use it for all kinds of things. You'd be surprised. Eyes, buttons, things like that. So we have our icing. Yep. Um, voila, out of the oven we have our pieces. That's right. Okay, and, and then we put our pieces. Over here we have... Yep. The now, bases. Right. Now these are, I'm just going to spread these out. Those are uh, some of the, uh, these are the roof pieces okay. with skylight without. Okay. Now uh, some people prefer not to use the skylight at all if they okay. don't want to decorate the inside. You could just use sure. uh, two solid so pieces. It's really, but, you just yeah, or if you really want to, if you really want to decorate the inside, you could do two skylights. If you really sure. want to have furniture and decorate the so walls, any variation. So, yes. And then uh, this, so this is what the finished um, front walls are going to look like. And they are very, very thin and, and crispy. Right. Yep. And they taste great, too. My husband says, you should tell people how great the house smells when you're baking the gingerbread. Well, when you came in with all your stuff, it uh, smelled great. And, yeah. you know, it's not even anywhere near the oven where you baked them. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, they have a wonderful fragrance. And these are the sidewalls. And um, so we're going to put them on... This is just cardboard covered in tin foil. This is your base, right? Right. And the okay. key thing here is you want to make sure that you tape. Uh, you fold it like you would a gift box, you know, like mm -hmm. you're putting wrapping paper. But you want to make sure you tape, tape the foil down securely because you don't want your house to fall off your base. <laughs> Okay. by mistake. So, so this is the base and, um, so and those are the cookies. And yes, we should. Show me how to do this. See if you I'm bet. capable. <laughs> all right. Um, now let's see. First of all, let me make sure you have a little bag of icing here with a little tip. Uh, let me just cut a little snip. Some people prefer to use a little bit bigger hole. It depends okay. on, on what you like. If you want to do it faster, you can okay. use it with a bigger hole or a smaller hole. Now, um, what you do here is you take a front, okay, give you a front. Oh, oops, oops, oh, no. there you oh, go. I knocked right. it and it didn't even break. See, there you go. Terrible. Okay. All right. So and we doing? also want to get a side wall ready okay. on our on our plate. Start with the front and the side. Okay. Yeah. Now you can think about where you want your house on your plot. Okay. Uh, I tend to like to put them on the diagonal. I don't know okay. why. I just right. think it's kind of fun. So. You just want to make sure you have enough room to put the whole house on. You don't okay. want it too far back. All right. Okay. And now what you're going to do is the following. Now, uh, the trick here is uh, one thing I should mention is that um, these cookies are set up so that the side walls line up pretty okay. perfectly. Five. They line up perfectly. Okay. Uh, if they're horizontal, you don't want to put them vertically, okay. or they're not going to. You're going to have a gap. So you want to make sure that it's horizontal. Okay. okay. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little icing along the bottoms, and I always squiggle my icing a little bit um, right. for for good coverage. So I think we're going to be able to. Get one started, but I know you want to show decorating the people. Right, right. So we this, have a finished one we can refer to once we've... Right. And then you do the side. And okay. then the side. And then what we're going to do is you're going to put it on your, on your plot and kind of hold it with uh, your, your, some of your fingers. You take your, pink, or your um, thumb and your, uh, your pointer finger and you're going to hold the side wall and you're going to do um, the side... Okay. That's going to attach to the front wall. So you do icing to icing. Yep. And then okay. you're going to do the bottom. And the bottom. So, and now you want your walls to be at a 90 degree angle, just yep. like the walls in your house. Okay. So you want to be careful. Okay. Okay. And uh, just put it right down there. Now, uh, once you have these two walls up, you can decorate the inside. Okay. And, um, the candies, for example, what we can do here. Assortment of candies. So you just keep to get the house built. You just keep 
doing that. You just keep putting icing cream. Sidewall, yeah. Top, icing you make sure and that it's, it's pretty sturdy. It's staying up. Yeah, you want to make sure that it's uh, on the bottom, you know, that you have icing on the bottom uh, so that it doesn't slide, slide off. off. Okay. Yeah. And now what you can do is you can start decorating the inside. Okay. So what I like to do is I take um, some candies. I try to find uh, Necco wafers make great tabletops. Okay. So I like to use Necco wafers and uh, let's see, sometimes what you could do is you can use these little things as, as uh, chairs. I'm trying to find okay. a nice, oh this would be a nice candy to put the Necco wafer on top. Um, okay. I like to inspire people when I, ha I like to have tables in my houses yep. so that, um, and I usually like to have food, maybe a cup of hot cocoa or um, uh, a piece of cake or some fruit. Okay. And you can see what I did was I put a little um, kind of cylindrical candy yeah. and put the neck away for on top. And then okay. these you can use as chairs. Sometimes you can um, take an, another candy underneath, whoops, uh, okay. say like this green gumball, and uh -huh. then you put that on like a cushion so it's like a little so stool. You can just be as creative, and you have a great uh, house over here that uh -huh. um, we can get a close up of. So you, you do your inside, you do your outside, and then you have little peep, the little people. Let's right. hold up a couple of the people. Okay. Um, Let me just unk it. This is going to tip over on me. I have to glue it to the wall to keep it standing up here. So you just have fun with it. Right. And I think and a point I wanted to make sure is it's not just a Christmas or a Hanukkah thing. It's all year round. It can be birthdays, you can do parties, birthday parties. My daughter's having a birthday party in December. I think we're going to do gingerbread houses. Wonderful. But you could do it in August and have oh. a, you know, beach theme. Oh, right, right, right. There was a woman uh, that I met at one of my, uh, uh, the International Gift Show in New York, mm -hmm. uh, who was a buyer, and her son was getting married, and it was having a um, Halloween theme, where everybody was getting dressed up in costume for uh -huh. his wedding. Oh, wow. So she bought the Halloween kit and made it and for made his it wedding. For his wedding. <laughs> yes. Great. So it's really, it's quite, uh, quite you know, uh, versatile. You can do all kinds of things. Okay. Now, uh, what I was going to do is make a little cake uh, for okay. the table right here. Um, you can cut candies, uh, like I did. These are liquish all sorts. And uh, so one of the techniques is, uh, one is just taking candies and adding candies to candies. Right. The other thing is to, to take candies and, uh, uh, you know, uh, cut them yeah. uh, in different ways. This one, uh, you can cut it, put a little dollop of, uh, of icing on. Mm -hmm. Here's cherry on the cake right there. Oh, how cute. So creative. And you put this right on the I table. and um, You just stick everything together with the frosting. Right. And it glues uh, hard and uh, it, it dries pretty quickly. And, and it is edible. Completely Everything's edible. Everything's edible. And your mixes are natural. All natural. Okay. Yep. Um, now, unfortunately, we don't have lots of time to do all the steps, uh -huh. but your website is fabulous. It has slideshows mm -hmm. of all the different steps, and it has close-ups of the different, you know, people, and you have a theme with, uh, actually, on this one, you have little mm -hmm. bears that are playing King of the Mountain, which is so adorable, and the whole thing is edible, which is great. Um, I'm going to hold up one of these people before we run out of time. Which okay. you've made. Here's the little elf you were talking about. Right. Maybe we can get a close up of these guys. So these are the little people decorated. And you could just. You see. know, the thing I like is you can spend as much time as you want, or if you have little children, you know, as much time as, as they're capable of. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. And, you right. know. As evolved or as, you know, simple um, as possible. I've so. had people who've done. Um, uh, one young mm -hmm. man, 24, made a baby grand piano with yeah. movable keys. Wow. Out of my cookies. So you can use the yeah. cutters or you can free freestyle. So this, right. this is so great. And I wish we had more time to do more of the detail. But your website does have all the um, steps and mm -hmm. all the information and all the different things we've talked about. It's uh, www.sweetdomestics.com. Mm -hmm. And every year you do a gingerbread building um, workshop at the Noel Webster House. That's right. Right, in December. Uh -huh. um, so that's something else that you could, if you're inspired, check out. It mm -hmm. uh, will be happening in December. Mm -hmm. um, 
And this has been great. Oh, wonderful. It's been so much fun. Well, check out my, uh, my website because yeah. um, there are some really wonderful, easy decorations you can do. Yes. Bears Lots are really ideas. easy. Yeah. Uh, you can put them on skis and yeah. all kinds of things. So, so cute. I think that's yeah. just, it's really, it's inspiring. And it really is simple. Well, I think of it as the point-and-shoot version of gingerbread yeah. house making, you know. Well, it's, uh, I know, but it's more homemade than just, you know, yeah. than um, some other options. So. <laughs> I like it to be doable for for anybody, yeah. you know, so you the don't have to scratch be... folks and the mixed scratch. That's right. Mix the scratch people, not from scratch. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, thank you so much. Oh, thank this you, has been Sarah. So great. I hope oh. you have a great holiday thank season. You. I'm sure it's your busy season. Yep. Um, you've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. So if you do want more information, you've been inspired to build a gingerbread house or have a gingerbread house party. Um, you, all of this that we talked about and a lot more is on www.sweetdomestics.com. Um, and uh, you, know, you can get as much information as you need there. Okay, so have a great holiday. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been Life and Style with Sarah, and we'll see you next month in the new year. Thanks. <laughs>